Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. I'm really super excited because not only do I have an expert on today in her field, but I have a friend on today. So I want to introduce to you my friend Wendy Napier, who is an interior designer with the specialty of a feng shui practitioner. And the reason why I wanted to have my friend Wendy on today is because she is the expert at knowing how to help you find your flow within your house and find um, just good harmony within how you utilize your space, how you interact with those people in your house and just, just finding deep meaning in how we live in our homes. So welcome, Wendy, and thanks for coming on. How are you today? Thanks so much, Jody. I'm great. Yeah, I'm really happy to uh, take part with this 30 Days of Hope. I think it's such a beautiful offering. Thanks. So you and I have been chatting, um, well, we chat once a week or even more so. We kind of hang out together. But one thing that you and I have talked a few times about is right now in this past year of 2020 so many of us like we're doing right now have been working from our homes yeah. and not only are we working from our homes but we have other people in our house maybe partner or parent or someone that's also doing school from home or working from home and we've ended up having a situation where maybe the flow of our house or the energetics of our home isn't quite flowing in a way that feels peaceful mm -hmm. and congruent with how we really want to live. So that's why I'm really excited to talk to you because this is your specialty. This is what you do is whether it's uh, a pandemic or not, what you do is you go into people's homes and you kind of suss out how they are, who they are and yeah. how they want to live. And so I think it's really important to talk to somebody like yourself that can really shed some light on some of the more meaningful ways that we can set up our spaces. Yeah, we're, be we're being asked a lot, right? This is, this is a huge ask for um, going so many years with, with your workspace looking a certain way, your family unit looking a certain way, and then a major shift. So it is going to be disruptive. But what I find most, um, gr like the gratitude behind the shift is that it has to happen for us to then reevaluate how we work and what's working for us and what's not working. And um, we're afforded that opportunity now to really take a look at who we are and how do we work and how our space is um, either helping or hindering that. Because in an office space, you enter into that place and it's almost decided for you. You know, a, mm -hmm. a good office space will have some um, opportunity to personalize or, or maybe you have a good relationship where you say, I need natural light or I need a quiet space, or I prefer to be on um, the basement floor versus the main level next to reception. Like there, there is that um, flexibility in some office spaces, but not like at home. So I think if there's anything that we can walk away with the talk that, um, the share that, that's happening today is that this can be seen as an opportunity as opposed to a hindrance. And that's just taking the time to really suss out what your office space is doing for you. Um, and like anything, it changes through the, through the week. So that's the beauty of working in your home because for me, I know Monday looks a heck of a lot different than Friday does. And I have that opportunity to to look in my space to say where is it going to um, support me to do that groundwork you know monday is we start out slow we start out a little bit heavier in building our foundation setting up our week what does that look like mm -hmm. and i don't even actually enter into my office space for the first hour of my work i, I do it at the kitchen table right because i feel like as soon as i jump into my office space it's go time 
Yeah. It's like I want to open up that, I want to be reactive rather than proactive. Um, so it's deciding what days of the week um, look like and then again how you're setting up your space to, to reflect that. And so I suggest we look at our senses. If you take a look at your senses throughout your, your um, week and throughout your space to decide do I actually need to be sitting down at this time of day or this day of the week or am I better suited standing up? Because it's going to evoke different creative outputs. And I don't, I don't care if you are a creative or you're like an ant, you know, um, bookkeeper, <laughs> which is actually creative in itself, but, but different tasks um, require different emotional capacities. And that is reflective in our space. And one thing I want to touch, uh, go back and touch on is um, one thing that fascinates me about the work that you do, Wendy, is that um, traditionally, as, as someone with an interior design background, as you mentioned, you, you were more working in a corporate way and you would, you know, go in and, and kind of deliver what they asked of you. But what you do in your work now is different, and this is what I find so fascinating is, is that you actually dive into someone's personality, which I'm all over that. I just think that's amazing, and I think that's why I love you so much, is you really get to know someone as deeply as you can. You have different tools that you will use with people to walk them through trying to more deeply understand them so that you can point them in a direction of this harmony of living. So can you speak a little bit about the process of how you might do that with somebody? How you get to know them and then help that blend into how they live? Yeah, it's, I can geek out <laughs> on this for a very long time because I love the Eastern practice of feng shui. And what that does is it looks at our elemental makeup and it's, it's not too dissimilar to like a Myers-Briggs or the Enneagram where it looks at the person as a whole, right? If we have say more fire and flair and creativity or, um, or vada, right? We're very heady. Then what, how does that interplay with our spaces? Um, you're right, I, I was corporate commercial for a number of years and that's very different because it's watered down, you design for the masses and you need to do that. But now that we're in our spaces, it's really dissecting the personality and what works in harmony for them. Um, and knowing that because it is a personal space, it can look different without impeding upon somebody else's needs for maybe um, like a quiet workspace. You get to decide what sounds, what scents, the touch, right? I get to decide whether I'm um, in a rigid chair or uh, spend an hour of the day in a, a soft chair in my living room, right? Mm -hmm. Like even acoustics. Um, I do really well in my creative frame when there's a, a little bit more chaos in around me. Mm -hmm. But building, um, scheduling and foundational stuff, I need complete silence. It's mm -hmm. like, different different days of the week um support that as well and you get to decide so like that's the gift of coming home yes is recognizing what type of worker are you and what type of work are you doing and thank you for saying that because i think after we've come through this great big long year that can feel so blown apart in so many ways so disruptive and so heavy mm -hmm. um and you you mentioned it at the beginning that you know we get to choose and there's power in that and when uh, you also said how we have to have things break down before we can you know mindfully decide how we want to rebuild that the piece and i i do think that's sort of the um uh Sorry, my call, I just had a call come in. Um, I do think that is one of the beautiful parts of this year, 
-hmm. is that we get to design our own lives and maybe we wouldn't have taken the time to wonder do i need the temperature in this room to be different and my chair to be a bit firmer right and so i i'm just really encouraged by the work that you do um and how can people get in touch with you and, and what are you offering people right now so i've got a fun i have a i have a playful offer in a personality assessment that I go through with uh, Feng Shui. Yeah, <laughs> and I know you've done it yourself and there's so much uh, connection to, to that work that you do. But what it does is it gives you a guideline of not just like the mundane, the practical things with, with ergonomics and your chair and the temperature and lighting and things like that, but it looks at the elemental aspect. So do I bring in more wood into my environment or more earth elements to support my um, elemental archetype, my own personality? So that assessment I'll send out to those that are interested um, and, and you can request that just by connecting with me either on my website, um, which is uh, opendoordesign.ca or else connect with me on social media and um, I'd love to send that out and help them. How can they connect with you on social media? Or is it under your name or Open Door Design? Yeah, Open Door Design or Wendy Napier. Okay. Um, Facebook, uh, Instagram. Yeah. Okay. And we'll post all of these um, in the in the description, and you guys will be able to click on Wendy's. Uh, website and, and find out what she's up to. So thank you so much for talking to me. Um, like I said, I'm super encouraged by the work that you do, whether we're in a pandemic or not. I think you're doing great healing work for people and for families. And I've personally seen the work that you do. I've been to your home and you guys, honestly, like Wendy is just absolutely one of the most incredible creative human beings. So if you want to connect with her, I highly recommend that you reach out to her. Um, yeah, she's the real deal. Thank you, Jody. So thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah. you. And uh, I'll talk to you soon, okay? Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Keep spreading hope and joy.